Hello and welcome to part one of four in the Livid Instrument Controller series where we'll be covering Control R. My name is Casey Harvey Taylor and I'm a product specialist here at Livid Instruments. What I have for us today is an Ableton live set chocked full of effects racks and instrument racks that are all created by hand. We're going to see how those effects racks and instrument racks can be controlled via Control R and the Live 9 remote script. So without any further ado, let's jump in. What I've launched here is a clip, a MIDI clip, which is firing off the sine wave kick drum that I've created here. This sine wave kick drum is just a basic sine wave that uh, was made an operator. Uh, we can go in and change some of the timbre of this by utilizing the EQ3 that you can see on the channel here. Now, when you place an EQ3 on any, uh, on any uh, channel in Live 9 and you're utilizing the remote script, what it does is it makes this 3x4 grid high, mid, and low. And you can think about these as living on top of this 3x4 grid where it mimics what happens on a mixer. Uh, EQs being high, mid, low. You have a aux end A, aux end B, panning, and then volume for the channel itself. Let's add some more uh, sounds to this drum. And what we've got here is a drum rack. This drum rack I have chocked full of sounds. These sounds were recorded utilizing a PZM microphone on a large table that I plugged into a Universal Audio 4710D, uh, and I used a lot of the tube um, on the preamp. Uh, now, these sounds are dry, dry and raw, and there's not a, a ton going on with them, but they are very unique sounds, which can add a lot, especially when you're doing electronic music. What I've done to create a little bit of space for them is I've kind of created a rhythmic and space return channel. So if we turn up um, the uh, return A here, or the send A, and we start listening to what's happening on return channel A. Here we've got a lot of movement and a lot of sound and a lot of space going on. And the reason for that is, is that I've created a space return channel here. So this is the Livid Percussion Space Return Channel. We can kind of go through some of this. This is a beat repeat, and this uh, increases the chance of the beat repeat happening, and the decay on the beat repeat itself. Uh, we've got chorus feedback, chorus amount, uh, delay feedback, delay amount, we get things real crazy there. Verb size, which is huge, and verb amount, which will really bury stuff that way. So I think things sound pretty good right about in there. Uh, now we can drop the bass in. Now this is the Livid Instrument analogy or analogish bass is kind of what I've called this. I put a couple of easy things just to kind of give it a little variety if you'd like, and that's the LFO uh, LFO amount. So if we want to go over here, we can turn up the LFO amount and the LFO sync rate. We can change that. So you can hear it get a little bit of a rhythmic thing as I have a uh, a uh, as it shaped the LFO shape that way. Cool. Now, if I bring up the volume on this, what I've got is I've already got some stuff going on in the step sequencer. Now, the step sequencer is a max for live device that you're able to download off of the Livid website. Um, basically, if we go here, we can kind of see that there are the 16 different presets. I'm just utilizing preset one. It's stepping through and the various uh, um, notes that I put in are firing off. We'll go deeper into this into in a later, um, in a later video. Uh, you can see though that I have uh, created uh, a instrument here that we're utilizing with it. This instrument, uh, I just called it the Bird Napper or Son of Bird Napper. Um, we can go in and we can change some of this stuff around. So if we go here, and we can take a look at what we have the ability to change, and that's some of the delay amount, some of the chorus amount. Now those are kind of individual things. It's still kind of dry. So if I go to this channel and I want to bring up um, the, the sends, because I've created a real big, quote unquote, spacer uh, effects return here. And there's some really cool stuff on this. 
So we can actually go in. And one thing I've done is take, take two audio filters and kind of shrink it. Cool way to get some uh, kind of cool rhythmic things that you can get going. Anyways, that gives you a quick rundown of kind of some of the stuff I put into the set. Throughout the series, I'm going to be building on this set. Uh, we're going to use a lot more of the sounds. I'm going to add some more returns, add some more instruments. This one's going to be really chocked full for you guys. So you're going to get a ton of stuff to download and muck about with. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Keep your eyes peeled as part two of four is coming up real soon. Thanks so much. Uh, visit liveatinstruments.com. Take a look at us on our Facebook page. Uh, follow us on Twitter. Follow us on Instagram. We always got a lot of cool photos and a lot of cool information heading out there. Until next time, thank you.